Hello, everybody. Welcome to the PWO WrestleCast Prediction Show. I'd say technically we have ourselves a two-man power trip, but it's the three-man power trip tonight, baby. The demo god himself is here with us. So, uh, guys, I don't know if it's aware, but uh, we're officially tomorrow night is AEW Double or Nothing. I'm hoping we get this out quick enough. Hopefully, YouTube, YouTube gods, hook us up. Don't don't hold us again like you did last time. Seriously. So, uh, and we got a pretty loaded card. And for the most part, I think this card is super predictable, with the exception of maybe two matches. Um, but I think everything else, I'm 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 like. 99.99999% sure on everything. Uh, starting off with the pre-show match, uh, the NWA Women's World Championship is on the line. Serena Deeb versus Riho. Serena Deeb defending the NWA title. And I, I, I got to stick with Serena Deeb here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I imagine she's still under contract with AEW. She signed to AEW, uh, and so is Rio. I, I imagine Serena Deeb kind of fits better with who I think they have planned for taking the belt off her at an upcoming NWA show that's not too far off here. Yeah, that's that's the boat that I'm in. Um, I definitely have uh, I definitely have Rio not not winning here. Um, I think that when the time comes for Serena Deeb to drop the title, it's going to either be Camille or Th- or or Thunder Rosa. I think it'll be on NWA programming. Um, you mentioned that they do have a show coming up here. Um, that would be When Our Shadows Fall. Um, that is literally next weekend. Um, there's no reason to put the title on Riho here. There's no build um, other than other, uh, other than the rankings. So chalk it up. I agree. I, mean, I don't think too much more needs to be said about it. I think uh, this is a reintroduce Deeb to a lot of the market. She hasn't been on an actual dynamite in a while, if I remember correctly. Um, I think I think, oh, think she, I do. I think she's been on Dark and Elevation, right? Or am I mixing her she, up? She defended the title against Red Velvet on AEW Dynamite. Oh, two uh, weeks ago, right? Two. Th- yeah, but before that, it it was a while. Because she okay. had been injured. Yeah, yeah, she she had the injury. Um, okay, so I was mixing that match up with uh, Dark. But, yeah, I mean, this is just to get more exposure for Serena D, really to put more attention on that belt, especially, uh, you know, where, where are we going to see that belt go, I think, uh, with their pay-per-view coming up. But, yeah, she's going to take it. It'll be a good match. It'll be fun. I'm going to go ahead and – Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just saying, good, good, a good match to give away. It's a good match to give away. Um, mm-hmm. I'm pretty certain now. This is two years in a row where they've done the women's uh, NWA women's title on the pre-show. I'm looking back real quick here. Um, oh, and I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Um, are you? Th- are you? Th- are you thinking about of when um, Alex and Kay was on the pre-show? Yeah. <sighs> I think that may have been all out though. Yeah, she needs. It was she needs to sign. I imagine she is actually getting signed here, not too, not too uh, far off, in my opinion. Yeah, she is going to be in the Ring of Honor Women's Tournament, which is fantastic. Um, we're next go with what I think is going to be the opener of the show. We have the Casino Battle Royale for a future AEW mm. World Championship match. Uh, our current contestants: we have Christian Cage, Matt Seidel, Powerhouse Hobbs, Penta of Zero M, Jungle Boy, Matt Hardy. Mark Quinn, Isaiah Casty, The Blade, Evil Uno, Colt Cabana, uh, Number 10, Preston Vance, Griff Garrison, Brian Pillman Jr., Max Caster, Anthony Bowens, QT Marshall, Nick Camarado, Dustin Rhodes, Lee Johnson, and To Be Determined. Um, now, I have to say this because I've gotten text messages all day about it for Mike DeShazo as well. I have to throw it out there for him. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pick a winner and who we think is going to be the 21st mystery man. So uh, I, I will, I will go first to give anyone time if they need to think real quick here, cause I'm putting a lot right. of people on the spot immediately. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say that I believe Christian cage is going to win here. Um, 
I think that uh, the, the storyline sets up for it. He's been setting himself up for a title shot. Now, we don't have to necessarily go that route. I think he's got to keep picking up wins and he can get the, the next title shot afterwards. Um, and maybe someone else, like a mystery person, could come in here and take that spot. Uh, so those are the options, in my opinion. I think, I think Christian Cage or Mystery Man, but I'm, I'm generally believing Christian Cage. That's where I'm at. Um, so, so who do you think the mystery man is? So I've, I've gone back and forth on this a couple of times here. Um, and I've, I've gotten a lot of requests and everyone seems to think it's going to be Andrade. And this is Andrade Alidolo uh, making an appearance for AEW. But I don't think they'd have him in the match if he's not going to win it. Um, like he's almost too big of a name to put there, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Um, and and I'm I'm pretty certain that Cage is winning this. So, I think I'm going to go with a debuting Zicky Dice. Oh, all right. He's been a free agent now for a while. Friend of the program. He's been putting some stuff out there that's always kind of like I could be making my way somewhere i know he's been doing his stuff on twitch um god he also just formed a stable um outside of aew that features a lot of people who are shown weekly on aw dark elevation and dynamite dan uh i was about to say danny jordan oh my god i'm messing up here i love her and i i can't even think of her name and this is bad um Oh, I'm dumb. I can't think of it. It's all right. We'll fix this in editing. Yeah. God, Thank God, you. Save me. Save me. <laughs> Thank uh, you. But also Thank Carly you. Bravo um, and another, another individual. So they've just formed a whole thing. I think that could also be a really cool introduction of a new stable to AEW. You guys know me. I'm all about stables and professional wrestling. That makes great storylines. Uh, so I'm thinking Zicky Dice here. Zicky Dice is the surprise, but Christian Cage is ultimately the winner. God. Um, I like what you got going on over there. Um, so I also foresee this being Christian Cage winning. Although, just to change it up a little bit, um, I'm going to say that Penta is going to be the winner of this. And... There and there is some history there between Kenny and Penta, so I think that story could also write itself. Um, as far as the mystery man, and I've thought about this, and I've and I thought about Andrade, and I thought about Daniel Bryan. You really um, upset if you picked mine. Um, I've also thought about Rich Swan. Oh, um, that would be good. That's a good just to try and get in to get his to get a title rematch. Um, I think I know who Pat's actually picking now. I just clicked in my head. But the one that I am thinking of, the one that can be in this match, dominate a little bit, throw some jobbers out, and then get eliminated himself eventually. There's no more BS here. It's Paul White. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Um, he did sign. Uh, not only to be a commentator, but to also be an in-ring performer, an in-ring talent. Um, I think this would be a great way to, you know, show that he's still got it without being overexposed. Um, we do have, uh, you know, we we do have the you know, Hardy family office in this in this match. They could team up to take him out. We have a lot of Dark Order. Uh, we have some Team Taz. Um, I think I think I think there's a lot of groups in here that could kind of that could team up to toss him out. Um, but yeah, that's me. Um, what about the demo god? Real quick, real quick. Oh, it is Danny yeah. Jordan. I'm not crazy. It is Danny Jordan. So, Danny Jordan is wonderful. I would I would hope you know this has always been a big signee or something. They've always used this spot as a big spot mm-hmm. to introduce new talent. 
So I hope not. I hope it's not Paul White. I hope they would have. I hope they would have announced him. I have no problem with him being in the match. Yeah. Um, but I hope that's not it. That would be kind of a letdown. Um, even if it's just a cameo thing, like an Andrade or Rich Swan, I would be more excited for that. Um, so uh, Christian has been the long kind of notched favorite for this match. He seems like an obvious choice. It's a great, uh, you know, w- next win for Kenny type of type of person. Um, you can see him naturally kind of fitting in with Moxley and Kingston, as I think that will be a continued rivalry, uh, you know, going forward. So you could do some six on six, you know, three on three stuff with those guys going forward. But it just seems to me that there's too much going on with Powerhouse Hobbs and Christian. I have a feeling that maybe Christian and Hobbs are going to take each other out and they're going to continue that rivalry. Um, so that said, I have two, two potentials that could end up being uh, – the entrant and both of them would win the first one is my sentimental pick because it'll always be my sentimental pick for a random guy showing up because eventually it's going to be correct this is going to be the villain <laughs> marty squirrel some point the villain is going to show up and it's going to be great for ratings because he's just the best He's really just the best. We, we miss you, Marty. Come home. Um, Views of Patrick Lilly are his own. <laughs> the, realistic, the realistic surprise that's out there that could just absolutely dominate is obvious, guys. Samoa Joe. 90-day contract, dog. He can't wrestle until July. I thought everybody who was released was... No, it was just Andrade. Ah, uh, well, well, so much for that. Um, what a bummer. Yeah, Daniel Bryan could be it. I'm sticking with Marty. Yeah, I, I thought I, I really I thought all those guys were not claws because Chelsea Green's out of hers. No, she's not. Yeah, she I just read that she can sign anywhere. I don't, I don't believe that's an accurate report because she's even said, I believe, with it's on, SLS that. It's on, it's on wrestling news. Well, I, well, I'm sitting here saying that might be wrong. Um, still gonna even be, if she is. Still going to be a Samoa Joe. Um, there's just a lot. There's there's just too too much smoke right now around Daniel Bryan going, going over to Japan for a little bit. Um, that, that's picking up a lot of steam right now. Um, which um, I'm sure would be a super boost to the arm um, just in their general talent pool. You get to see a lot of matches you've never seen. Um, so I actually just read something here uh, that the mystery man is potentially someone from New Japan. That'd be cool too. I mean, the word what- is... Oh, if it's if it's him, then I think that he wins it. And then the storyline. It depends. Is, is is New Japan working a a singles deal with someone else, or are we See, getting worked? I think uh, there's no way Tony Khan came out and said what he said unless he's confident that he's working with New Japan. In my opinion. Who do, you um, think, who, who do you think it is? Who do they think it is? I'm sorry. I, I was... it is because they sent all of their non-Japanese uh, wrestlers home during COVID, but then also reopened up dates. A lot of word on Jay White and a lot of word on Kenta. Ugh. The big yeah. the big point being Bullet Club. Yeah. Um. Also, some you know, Phantasma. 
if it was you know if it was anybody like I almost hope it's uh yeah um, blah forgot his Come name. Come on. I don't know. Because I know you're thinking about Chase Owens because he's no. a perfect candidate to I come in here. I was actually gonna say Master Watto. Um, oh fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Christ. All right. No oh, um be Tama. No, no, no. Uh, you know, but for real. Screw it. Let it be Okada. Yeah, and if we're thinking about just talent that are not currently overseas, um, I think that Chase Owens is a great p- potential joker here. I think he is a guy that could represent Bullet Club, get a couple of eliminations, and still build into what a- AW is doing right now. Yeah, um, we know Alpha and El Phantasma was working in Impact. I'd be good with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's. Well, in, I almost he's, be surprised if it's Dave Finley. He's infinitely better than uh, than Chase Owens. Dave Finley win it? No, no. Stop. You know, some good brother is gonna cost him. Oh, uh, you're right. <laughs> um, I, I, honestly, it would I'll, be cool to see a, a higher up from Impact come and win it, though. Well, I thought you were gonna say Moose. Um, I thought you were going to lose so that I thought about it, but he already else. he already has a title shot. But oh, that yeah, would be gonna... but that would be a cool twist to it if he wins. Then all the belts are up for it when they when they wrestle. That would be a cool. That actually would be really awesome. I, I'm about uh, to say, I, I, all right, that's what I want to have happen. Now. <laughs> Jesus, can you um, imagine? Can you imagine what that would do for Impact's ratings? Can you imagine Moose's entrance in front of a live, full audience crowd? Hopefully, they would know to yeah. go Moose. Oh, Moose. well, it's, it's yeah. Look, 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 Moose. Following along, I thought this was gonna be like the what chance? Moose. Um, <laughs> following along with everyone who's shown up and already is, is in uh, Jacksonville and have been at a couple shows have already put out like they're the same people who I see talk about Impact every week as well. So I, I think enough people would get it, and it would. Be, I think it would be huge. So if he weren't injured, my original choice for the Joker was going to be Eddie yeah. Edwards. Oh. You know how much that would piss me off. I, know. <laughs> I, think it would be, I would be so mad. I'm gonna rage well, quit this whole pay per view. I mean, but. If if there is a legitimate wor- working relationship there, you know, and I think it was Jim Ross that came out and said it. Impact's getting the full benefits of you know the AEW Impact work working relationship, um, you know, and I think it's kind of time for AEW to cash in on some of that. I really do. And this wouldn't surprise me at all if it if it was an Impact guy. Yeah, they do have the good brothers over, but I mean, those I love those guys, but they're not they're not moving the needle really. God, could you imagine? They're not the bringing new Day or Ace Austin, like one of those young scrappy talents that we always keep talking about wanting I, to see. I hate to say it, but it probably if it's going to be beneficial for AEW, it probably needs to be someone who has a following. And I don't think, as much as I love those young guys. I don't think guys like Chris Bay or Ace Austin or even Trey Miguel are going to, like, move the needle. I think the people that already know those guys and watch Impact are probably the same guys that are already watching AEW. You've got you've to bring some name recognition. Maybe that's a Sammy Callahan. Maybe. Here's a twist. What a twist. And AEW has already shown that they don't have a problem with women in the Battle Royal. What if it's Tessa Blanchard? Actually, I don't think they've they've only done it for Gordon Grace was the all in. Yeah, it was all in though. It, wasn't it was the AEW. Well, come on, we're splitting hairs. Well, my, my uh, only thing is But the point is the all in battle. AEW. The all in battle, but they've shown that they don't mind putting a woman in. But they haven't done it since being on TV. That's what I'm saying. Like it has, it's been done at but, all. In. But they don't really have, they don't really have a woman like a Tessa or a Jordan Grace 
to do that with. I, I just don't see them pulling that trigger. That that's kind of. Uh, I'm I'm may, and maybe we're wrong, but may, maybe I'm wrong. But I'm just saying that wouldn't be a bad way to. Oh, shit! What if she wins? Instead of going after Kenny, she says, "I'm coming for the women's championship." That'd be that'd be a cool that'd be a cool spot. Be a cool way to introduce her. Even if she comes out of the Joker and like finds a chicken shit way to win. I just. I don't know, man. I don't know. I feel like that would almost be detrimental to Christian Cage at this point. I don't I don't think losing battle royals can be detrimental. As long as he comes out with the win over Hobbs in the long run. And maybe that maybe that's the, the thing we're not looking at. Maybe uh Hobbs did just jump him. They did just had the big fight in the back. Uh, that's what I'm saying. They it uh, almost <sighs> It almost seems like they're pushing that um, that rivalry too much for it to close. We're all missing the correct answer, and then I want to move on. Is it Jungle Boy? Uh, no, it's this isn't the opening match. This match goes on after Scorpio Sky, Ethan Page versus Sting and Darby Allen. Your Joker is Darby Allen, oh, and Darby Allen wins. That would- Oh my God! No. I, I'm sorry. Wait, now hold on. No, I I understand. No, that's good. Not no, we're not doing this. You, I, re- but you I re- have, refuse to listen. But you at least have to admit the way that Darby has been being booked. I can't uh, hear you. They wouldn't, they wouldn't put him back to back. Though. Can't hear you. They probably wouldn't. But I don't think they Darby, would. Darby is somebody that could. That could go one on one, Kenny Omega. He could eat the loss. He could keep up with Kenny. They would put on a good match, and when he loses, he would still come out with no with with no damaged credibility. I think you want to save that. Uh, like I, I don't think that's something you want to throw out there right now. If we have Kenny keep beating all of the young up and coming talent like Orange Cassidy and then Darby Allen and. I, I do think Jungle Boy has a legitimate option here. Um, I don't think Pat can hear us, but we've slightly moved on from Darby. No, he, no, he can't. Um, but uh, but I uh, originally I was sitting here thinking Jungle Boy. Um, but I, I don't think they're yeah. going to have Kenny Omega beat and bury all of the young talent. I, I don't want. I don't think they want to do that. Let's take advantage of some of the older guys that we have. Let's beat some of the older guys. That way, our young, fresh talent. Stay young and French. That way, when guys like Darby or Jungle Boy get that chance, it's going to be big. You know, I don't think we want to throw that one away, especially if we're going to have him already in a match. But let's quickly go ahead and hit that one. Uh, we have Sting and Darby Allen versus Scorpio, Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page. And uh, so I've, I've been sitting on this one for a while here, and I think everything in me says this should be Sting and Darby Allen. I'm going Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page, though, um, for, for two reasons. I'm not exactly sure what they're going to do with the tag titles, and I think making sure you have potential there for them to go after the belts are important. But I also think having Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page healthier and a bigger role down the line. I think Darby can afford to eat the loss after getting ragdolled for weeks now in a row. Sting has been jumped several times. Let's take advantage of that. This is an affordable loss. I'm going to, I'm going to see, I, I agree with your points, but to my point that I made just moments ago, everybody is super high on Darby Allen and it's going to be Darby Allen and Sting for the win as much as it shouldn't be, because that's just the way that Darby is being booked. Now there now now there was an interview I think it was with Scorpio Sky that I was reading about where um, where he believes that him and Ethan Page are better off as singles competitors um, as opposed to a tag team, but I don't think that really does a whole lot here. But I do agree with what you're saying that we need a direction for the tag team titles. I don't think Sting and Darby Allen are. The answer, I think, though, that Sting and Darby winning here 
kind of almost kills his feud, which I would be happy to see. Whereas I believe if, if, if Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page get the win, I feel like we have to at least see another match with these four, um, which I would rather not. So long story short, Sting and Darby Allen. Yeah. I don't know. I really don't know. Neither neither result will really surprise me. Um, I don't feel like Paige and Scorpio Sky are built to last long term. I I think this is a temporary thing, but I also feel like it's almost too quick to implode. Um, And I think that is probably why they get the win here. And you're right, there's going to be a a rubber match, so to speak, that Darby and Sting will eventually get them back. Um, Maybe they put Sting on the uh, put Sting on the bench, uh, so to speak, for this one, and Darby ends up being put with a new talent, a younger talent that Sting procures to be his partner. Um, And that is how they the difference is made. Sting's too old to get it done. Um, but I, I think Paige and Scorpio Sky go over tomorrow night. But, uh, yeah, that will also unfortunately mean we'll, this will be the last of that. I do also want to throw out there some wrestling math. Uh, Sting and Darby Allen stood tall at the end of the show uh, uh, last Dynamite. Yeah, I normally hate going against the grain with stuff like that. AEW has um, proven, though, that they do go yeah. against that a lot more frequently than. Yeah, other instead of being like 90, 80%, it's like. They're, I mean, they're run by they're run by smarks. They did get the business. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, so they, I think they try and surprise and go against the grain a lot um, to keep you guessing. That's why I think the show is going to surprise a lot of people. Like you said, like it seems like a lot of the card is pretty predictable. You know, I think predictable, but. but that's until you know Christian doesn't win the battle royal. Sheeta retains. All these other things go on that you don't expect. Sure, sure. sure. Britt sure. Baker wins the belt sure. on Dynamite in two weeks. Uh, all right, let's go to a match. I'm actually pretty. I, okay, this is the one I think I am most confident in. Hangman Adam Page versus Brian Cage. One-on-one, Cage says he's going to leave Team Taz in the back. And for me, I think this is a Hangman Adam Page victory. I think you'll see Team Taz run out and Cage will get angry with them and then get caught with a buckshot. Uh, Thus furthering the divide of Team Taz. They've done, I think, a pretty interesting job of pushing this whole narrative of Cage is kind of like not with it. So uh, they've they've pushed the we're together, but Cage has pushed a whole lot now listening to Taz. So that's just where that's just where my head's heading heading at. I think. Yeah, I'm gonna make this quick. I completely agree. After last night's dynamite, um, Hangman's got a lot of momentum. Um, He should win. And I think ultimately this is a vehicle to get powerhouse Hobbs over. Um, I think um, I think that Brian Cage will eventually lose the FTW championship to powerhouse Hobbs once that split finally happens, which who knows how long it could go for. Um, but oh, okay. <laughs> but no, um, so, sorry, something just clicked in my head. You're good. I'm going the other way on this. Going the other way on this. Um, Cage is going to prove that he does not need Team Taz by okay. winning this match clean. They're going to come out and celebrate, and they're going to give him the Batista treatment. And you're going to have. Oh, you mean the Randy Orton treatment? There. Yeah, it was or or we all we all, we it, all happened, it. it happened to both of them. No, no, no. Batista got the jump on him. You're right. You're right. Actually, you are right on that. Orton got the he yeah. is gonna give them the Batista treatment. Yes, there you go. I got you. 
Um, but no, I, I think they're going to lay them out, you know, <laughs> say, you know, you know, you're nothing without us and Hobbs or Taz will pick up the FTW belt and stand over top of cage after after the match is over but but cage is gonna win proving that he doesn't need team taz because hangman's got to drop a little bit in the rankings yeah they're not ready they're not ready for him to be the savior of the company and win the belt which we're gonna go full circle on and he's gonna win the title at full gear off show that was named after his initial challenge after that's what just clicked in my head but he's he's gonna win the belt off Kenny eventually. He's gonna be the guy, in my opinion. I think that's how you make him the star. Um, and there's just way too much full circle going on there for him not to be the guy, in my opinion. Um, but so you have to have him kind of fall again. That way, maybe he can fall into a program with Dark Order. I mean, something's got to give there, too. Like, them just backing him up and showing up randomly. Like, I, I know that we're, we we feel like this Dark Order thing is, this is a whole separate tangent. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, they can't turn heel because of negative one and stuff like that. But, like, at some point, the Dark Order is going to remind you that they're supposed to be like a cult and terrifying. And there's going to be a point where, you know, Adam, you haven't reciprocated our love and, and you need to learn a lesson. So maybe that's time for that to happen. But he's got to be held off and held out of the picture for a little bit longer, I think. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, I was so certain about that match. And then it clicked on my head like, oh, Wait. Man, I still think he could win. Um, this, I, this is another one that won't surprise me to go either way. Mm. I want Cage to win. I think Cage. I think Cage needs it. Yeah, I just. I, that I really dude enjoy is, seeing Hangman on top, from one Virginia boy to another Virginia I, boy. I love uh, Hangman, and he's the future of the company. But like. This is where we're seriously lacking a trio's title or something. I mean, there's guys, the, the whole group of Taz, I mean, those guys should be carrying gold. You know, there's so many trios that they could be, you know, competing against best friends, Death Triangle, Dark Order. Um, you know um, what? You know, uh, Jurassic Park. Uh, you just said that, and you know what else just clicked in my head? Don't be surprised if Mystery Man could be Christopher Daniels. Or, or it's going to be Ray Phoenix off of injury. Injured. Well, he, he's already been pulled out of the pay-per-view from my understanding. Well, well, maybe that's why they've kept it a mystery is if he can go, he gets thrown in the match. If he doesn't, it's Paul White. Paul White, I'm right. I hate you. <laughs> as Yay. long as it's not Velveteen Dream. 90 day no compete clause, dog. Wait, he was he was NXT though. Isn't isn't his a 30 day? Not from my understanding. If you if they re-sign it, still 90 Still days. would have been only one oh, week, okay. man. Up. And up, Quinn up. No, for Velveteen Dream. This. We're not doing this. He doesn't here. care about it. We're age. not doing this. We're not doing this. Cut this. Next match. Fuck this and everything. I back. didn't. I didn't. Cody say Rhodes it. versus it me? Mia Go Go, the American Dream versus the British Invasion. I don't see Douglas Williams here. No, but maybe we'll see Magnus. Stop it. Ooh. I know, I know. Yeah, you got me interested. Uh, <laughs> all right, so this whole thing. Are you going to do the thing that I'm going to do? Probably not to the same extent that you are. I was super into this. Um, I'm actually very excited here. Uh, God, that weigh-in on Friday took a lot of steam out of this for me. Every, everything about that weigh-in was god-awful. 
Include, yeah. including, including the setup. They blocked out so many fans with those uh, flags. Flags. You couldn't have lifted that shit 20 feet higher so all those fans in the back could see everything clearly. It still would have been a shot. Um, Such a dumb... Yeah, it was it was it was very drawn out for nothing for nothing to happen. Yeah, there was no fight. There was nothing. Dustin Rhodes tried to get his hand on QT, but QT got out. But that's what I'm that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, Dustin should have got you know sucker punched with brass knucks or something, and you know, yeah. been left bleeding or, by, or go-go by dropping, something. dropping someone with a kidney shot. Anything. Something. Kid- Nothing happened. Dude, imagine imagine if Go-Go uh, drops Paul White with a kidney shot. Yeah, that would have been great. Huge. A Go-Go comes out, uh, comes into the pay-per-view with so much momentum, so even yeah. if he loses, he dropped a giant. Um, and here's where I'm torn on this. For one night only, it's the American dream Cody Rhodes. That's part of the reason I think he's gonna lose. He first of all, he needs to lose. He needs to lose. Um, I'm so like Cody, man. Quit booking yourself. This like like let somebody else book you a little bit, dude. Like you, you, you stand you stand tall every every feud. You you Not against Darby. Eh, kinda. So kinda not against Darby. Darby so Darby got thing. the belt off of him. But how many times has he beat Darby? And how many? I mean, eventually he's going to come around and beat Darby for something important. If this whole thing is a vehicle to get Anthony Agogo over, then the decision is there, and you need to pull the trigger. If it's not, then why are we having this? Exactly. Uh, ultimately, I, I'm at the point where Gogo needs to win via crook. If that's if that's how we're gonna do this. So hear me but, out on this. Well, wait, 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 wait. Let me finish real quick before you start. Uh, a Gogo was the first out of company non wrestler signee that they really promoted. A lot of people try to give him shit for booking a, a boxer here. Um, but a go has proven he's got the look, and honestly, he's pretty damn entertaining on the mic. Mm-hmm. Um, we got all the vehicles here. If he's too green to show out in this match, Cody Rhodes is good enough to carry him to at least be representable. Um, man, I almost I, I'm of two opinions. Uh, a go go either needs to win via some type of shenanigans with QT and Camarado attacking Dustin Rhodes or or doing something very bad on the outside. Like maybe they go after Arn and Cody's distracted and ends up getting shot in the kidneys. Or we go Rocky on this on uh, and uh, Cody has to pull the Apollo Creed here. Not actually die in the ring, but get beaten so bad. So are you are you saying now? Because if you remember what happened in Rocky, Rocky lost the fight to Apollo, but Apollo had to beg him for the rematch because it was a split decision. That's uh that's not the Apollo match I'm referring to. You talking about the Drago match? So, so what? <laughs> what I'm saying is he needs to get beaten so you, bad. You want, okay, so you're saying Rocky four. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying Cody needs to get beaten so bad that Gogo fights. And Arn Anderson gets Dustin? dumped before he can throw in the towel. But Gogo fights Drago. <laughs> Good. Gogo fights Dustin. Jesus. Uh, so, yeah. Here's the thing. Cody is Cody's not doing himself any favors. This booking has been awful. A lot of his booking has not been very good. He's a really great wrestler. He's a really great wrestling mind, but like he, man, I don't know. Some of his shit is just so dumb for himself. 
he's like a superhero and like at some point like you gotta get over yourself like use yourself in the way wrestling should be he needs to lose and he needs to lose and he needs to have an existential crisis about the whole American dream thing and uh, that's why I'm not a dream I'm a nightmare I know what's what the what son I was. It goes all the way back to the the Dustin fight. You know, I know, you know, I I, I know enough about myself to know which son I am, and uh, you know, I've made peace with it and all that good stuff. Like all that is what we loved about Cody at the beginning of this run, and why his shit was so good. Go back to that. Go back to the As- roots of storytelling that. You, like quit being so goddamn hokey like we all loved dusty when cody comes out in polka dot pants tomorrow night it's gonna be so cringy it's gonna it's gonna look like what tommy dreamer wears yes it's gonna be awful so i hope he doesn't hope he doesn't he needs he needs to go into this match and get molly wop just like matt said he needs to get beat. He needs to get put on the shelf for three to six months. You know, piss and blood. Not if he's on the shelf for three to six months, he's out for the year. Yeah. Because there's a certain Brandy Rhodes who's, who's pregnant right now. Yeah, who's going to give birth soon? Uh, well, how long has she been pregnant? I don't know if it's soon or not. Um, Spoiler for the tag title match. But Renee is due before Brandy. Um, but I think maybe four to five months at this point for Brandy. It's hard to tell because we don't know how long she's been pregnant versus yeah. the announcement of gender. Well, they announced. I think wasn't it December? Wasn't it? Wasn't it like December when they announced that they were expecting? It was like right as everything with Shaq was going on. So speaking of Shaq, that's how Anthony Agogo is going to win this match. Is zombie Jeez. Shaq? <laughs> I'm just oh, hear me out on this. Covered in little pieces of table. We've Sha- never- Shaq disappeared from the back of that ambulance, We've and never- there was never any resolution. Uh, it would be the dumbest shit ever, but how I, I will laugh my ass off if Shaq pops out from underneath the ring and pulls Cody to hell. To hell! <laughs> Where to, Cody? <laughs> You've been watching too much WWE, Ben. That would be a... Oh. <laughs> so, so... I assume this part's getting edited out. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> yes, it is. So, be a man, Hogan. So, also the- <laughs> we're off the God, rails. Ryan. God, we're off the rails, baby. Give me, give me your thoughts on how this match ends, and then let's move for oh goodness' sake on. Yeah. Um, ultimately, um, and I thought two ways about this because I thought that they could go the dark route and do something with Brandy. Um, <laughs> the go-go punches her in the stomach. It was no, well, his fault. But then I'm like, wow, that's really dark. So um, I think I think the best way to do this is the way that Matt's booking it is just have Cody just get just hands after hands after hands and it's going to be referee stoppage. That would be that would be the best thing to do. I don't think you let. I, I okay, I'm with it, but I don't think Cody lets the referee stoppage happen because he's defending America. And I don't think he has he, a choice if he's if he's yeah. unconscious. I'm with if, that. If Aubrey stops the match, she stops the match. Yeah, I think I think, I think it's so. going to be by. Okay. I think it's going to be like cannot get up, cannot. What what's gonna injured. happen? What's gonna happen? Is a go go's gonna hit him with the punch? It's gonna look like he's not gonna make a standing 10. He's gonna get up just before the 10. QT is gonna 
argue that he wasn't up before 10. Dustin's going to go over to, to pull QT off. And while that's going on to distract Aubrey, we're going to get the brass knucks. We're going to get another punch with the brass knucks this time. Cody's going to be spitting up blood and not make the 10 count. Anthony and Gogo. All of this is what should happen. I You're hate right. Kane. I wouldn't be surprised if Cody wins tomorrow. Cody is definitely going to win tomorrow because Cody's on the ego trip. Yeah. He thinks he thinks he gets to win every rivalry because he can't win the world championship. His booking since originally losing the belt to Brody Lee has been rough. Ever since he dropped the belt to Brody, he's got some WWE booking. And he's just on an island. Like, none of his stuff works with anything else. Yes. There's AEW, and then there's the Cody Rhodes show. Like, none of it, everything that Cody does is, like, totally isolated from the rest of the AEW world. Like, there's no continuity there, and that's bad. It's really bad right now, to be honest. Like, really bad. And I could go on a rant for an hour about it. Um, which sucks because I love Cody. I love his in-ring work. The American Nightmare is a great gimmick. Um, a lot of the shit he did, everything he did from leaving WWE to the, to losing the belt to Brody Lee was all perfect, great, amazing stuff. And I didn't, I didn't hate how he won the belt back. I thought it was rushed. Um, they didn't give. That. They didn't Aaron give. Stuff they didn't rough. give Brody a fair run with that belt the way they should have. I know hindsight is always twenty twenty. It's incredibly easy to say that now, knowing what happened to Brody. God rest his soul. But um, I, I just I think that they they should have gave him. He should have won that dog collar match, and uh, you know had to do something drastic like go through a gauntlet of Dark Order guys to get another shot or something. But just let Brody be the the monster he was for longer than that. Agreed. All right, let's move on here. Uh, AEW tag title matches. Let's go ahead and do that. Young Bucks versus John Moxley and Eddie Kingston. Um, I'm thinking I'm sticking with the Young Bucks here. I, I, I could see Moxley and Kingston winning this. They've done the whole push uh, of climbing up the rankings. Uh, at the same time, I just I, I think it's too early to jump off of the uh, everyone in the elite not holding gold, and I think they need to hold the belts for a little bit longer before losing them to maybe someone at the top of the mountain. That's a hint for later. Cod, what do you think? Um. Completely agree. Their title reign is at 194 days. I think they will eclipse the 228-day reign that Omega and Hangman had. Um, I could see Mox and King pulling it out, but then my question is, you know, if the long term is for Mox to have some time off while Renee um does does give birth you know are we gonna have the title on him then pull it off of him and then bring him back to tv like that that's a mess in itself um but i say that in the same breath that i say that he's been the iwgp u.s heavyweight champion for so long and he's made x amount of defenses so Going on two years yeah i mean that create is that part of that is COVID related. Part of that is listen. I get that a lot of people relinquish titles. A lot of people had defenses immediately as soon as they could, as soon as they could travel. Um, he did. He did. He did not. He chose to stay in America. He chose to stay with AEW. Um, I think he was given that option. I think. Yeah, New, I think New Japan values the name John Moxley so much. They were willing to wait. I mean, shoot, look at what they're doing now. They're sending Nagata over to wrestle him on, on AEW just to get, you yeah. know. New Japan. My thing, my thing is, though, is like, 
you know, we've seen cases where, you know, there's a huge gap in, you know, title defenses. And I'm a big proponent of defend your title every 30 days for it, for, for it to mean something. You know, or to me, or to let your title reign actually mean something. Um, so that's kind of where my head is at here. I do think the Bucks retain. Um, I think there's a couple of teams on the roster right now that would be able to take them. I think that the acclaimed are up there. Um, I think they have all of the God given tools that you you can have them feud with literally anybody, literally anybody. And then if it's not them, Matt made the FTR reference, you know, they're always on, on the table. So um, obviously AEW's tag division, one of the best in the world. So the best in the world at this point. I'm sorry. No go. one, no one's tag divisions competing with it. Not even close. Which means now we can have trios, which I predicted in our beginning of the year prediction show. For what it's worth, and I do think now is the right time to throw it out there, is that there has been a lot of word and that there will be trio belts before the end of the year. A lot of speculation that it'll probably, oh, the the original crowning will happen on the first rampage. Hmm. So let's not forget that AEW is getting a second show on Friday nights at 10 in yeah, August. That would, that, would, that would bring their total shows in the week to four. What would be really cool if they're going to do that? Make the whole rampage, the tournament, an, an eight-team tournament, and well, it's only that. an hour. Oh, uh, so it'll be have to be a four-team tournament, unless you do the entire tournament on dynamite, except for the quarters and finals. No, you'd have to get down to the semis and finals. That's what I mean. Sorry. Get down to the so that would be great to a quarterfinals. Oh god, I'm I'm gonna write stuff down while we're talking. This sounds like a young bucks creative control. Young bucks are gonna return retain. Um, the young bucks. Young bucks are gonna retain. Something bad's gonna happen to both Moxley and Kingston. All right. Up next, the match that uh, uh, God maybe the match that everyone's excited for. Uh, I'm not sure. This one though has been for a lot of us. We're ready. It's Miro defending the AEW TNT title versus Lance Archer. Um, I'm going to start this one off here, and this is going to be controversial. And I'm ready. This is going to be. A uh, no contest. Uh, there's not going to be the, that would be the first in AEW history, correct? I believe so. There's not going to be a definitive winner. I don't think it goes time limit, which would be good, but typically they put it to 30 to an hour for title matches on, on pay per views. I don't think Miro and Archer can go for an hour. I could see 30 minutes, but even that's pushing it. I think this is a they go through the stage of some kind and neither can reach the count of 10. Um, I I think it's too early in Miro's reign to take the belt off him. I don't – now I'm torn here because I could see Miro winning because um, it feels like Archer is kind of pushing himself further away from Jake. Has anyone else kind of picked up on that? Am I just crazy? No, a little bit. It's hard to tell because Lance hasn't been featured in a prominent role lately. I mean, they've they've had him doing the vignettes and coming out. And there's know. been a, there's been a lot of like coming for the save though. There hasn't been a lot of yeah like, actual scheduled matches. Like he's been kind of out of the out of the picture a little bit. Um, so I, I just, I could see the split here maybe happening. Maybe Jake Roberts forms a, an alliance with Bear Country and Bear Country takes out Lance Archer because he can't win the big one or he's not listening to the head of the table. Wink. Um, 
but I, I think this is a, a no contest slash double count out esque feature here. However you want to call it. I don't think there's going to be a clear winner. I think both are not going to be able to get up from a count of 10. Oh. Old prediction, Cotton. Let's see how it plays out. Yep. There you go. Cotton, what do you think? Um, no doubt. This is a this is a Miro win. Miro retaining his title. Um he is gonna be in uh he is gonna have Lance Arch in a game over. He will not submit though. He will pass out. So it kind of goes with your mindset in that regard where Protecting you know, he lot. doesn't yeah, exactly. Um I think it's way too early to um you know pull a super no contest, but at the same time, I think, you know, we're all on the same page here. Protect both both men. It's going to be a hoss fight. It's not going to be long. You know, I, w- I would be surprised if this is over a 10-minute match. Um, they're to beat the piss out of each other. Um, and, it, and it's going to be exciting. It's going to be great. I will say, I want those out there now before anyone disagrees. I think uh, a pass-out victory is better than a submission or pinfall. I think it's a much better protected finish. That way they still look strong. They didn't give up. Patty, what you think? Funny you brought up the no contest. I am actually going to go with a time limit draw. That was what I was going to go with. Time limit draw with Archer, um, with Archer having the upper hand. Um, and Miro is going to, you know, play up the heel angle of you couldn't beat me, you don't deserve another shot. Um, you know, even though he was losing, maybe losing the match at the time. Um, so I think that's going to be how it plays out. And eventually Lance Archer is going to get the belt off Miro, but it's going to be much, much further down the line, maybe two pay-per-views from now. They'll find a way to keep Archer out of the, the championship picture um, for a little while. So that's what I'm thinking. If somebody wins, I do think Miro will win. I just... I think him beating Darby, regardless of how it got done, you know, I don't care that Paige and Scorpio ran in during the match. Him beating Darby means they think he is a future world champion, in my opinion. Um, They're not, they're, they protect Darby to the point where, um, you know, you have to, you have to, really pick and choose who he's going to lose matches to. And I think Miro is is one of those few guys that after we settle this belt collector thing, he's one of the guys who's going to be a future champion in this business. And uh, I hope Archer is too. I love Archer, man. He's one of my my very, very favorites. He's he's He's... He's one of the few guys that I feel like has been actually misused by by AEW so far. Um, not that he's been used poorly per se. I just I still think he should have beat Cody. He goes back to Cody. Uh, I still think he should have beat Cody and been the first TNT champion. But it is what it is. We are here. We are with what we've booked. Up next is Hikaru Shida. Defending her brand spanking new women's world title. It looks real good. Doesn't look like a toy anymore. Uh, against Brit, sorry, Dr. Brit Baker, DMD. And uh, guys, the doctor will see you now and she will be having that belt around her waist. I won't be surprised if maybe there's a little bit of a, you know, a little dirty win here. But you know what? If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. And uh, it's Britt Baker's time, man. She's putting the work. Sheeta has had as good of a run as she could um, 
unfortunately, I don't think she ever got really the emphasis and the story that she deserved. But, you know, I, I think now is the time for Baker. Um, I think we got a lot of feuds that we can take with that, especially if Serena Deeb loses that belt at the NWA show. Like, I think she will. Yeah, I I agree 100%. Um, this is a Britt Baker uh, championship win. If it's anything to build off of her um, her coming on Dynamite last night and interrupting the Hikaru Shida celebration, um, I think this is a clean win. Um, I think when she makes comparisons to, you know, you know, Stone Cold and starting the, you know, the 316 era, you know, and I think it was phrased that way, you know, to, to, to avoid any kind of issues. But, you know, the fact that we are in the DMD era is fantastic. Um, I think that's a great piece of merch coming up soon. Um, but, you know, it, it's also going to show that, you know, Britt Br- Baker's always been championship material. I know, I know that there was um, a small shot taken earlier today on social media at you know Britt Baker's expense, um, but you know this is her time. It's a long overdue. I think Hikaru Shida, like like you said, the storyline hasn't been there. They haven't invested because COVID, you know, travel restrictions, etc. Not having enough challengers, so it's kind of had to get to this point where it's kind of run a little too long in order to put the title on the right person. Um, but I'm very excited to see where we go from here. Um, if she retains, I don't know where we go. That's uh, my only problem. The names are Serena D or Thunder Rosa. Tessa Blanchard. That's a short list. That's a short list. Thunder Rosa, Sam Deeb, Tessa Blanchard. Those if, are the only three. If Hikaru Shida retains, there's a woman over an impact running out of people to buzzsaw through. It might be time we go champion for champion here. Seriously, if this if if that's the way that it's booked and Sheeta retains, I feel like you know, you know, withholding Tessa because we don't know what's going on there. You know, there are talks, there aren't talks. Uh, they're trying to get Daga to get her. Who knows? Um, but you're right. The three women would be, um, you know, two two of which it would be champion versus champion. You know, and I'll also again, say this. Um, also, I don't think it'll be champion versus champion. I think Camille is going to walk out as the women's champion for NWA. Uh, there's a free one for you, but that's just my opinion. Uh, shout out to Camille. Friend um, of the program. But uh, I also want to throw out that there is a plethora of talent available uh, come midway of July. So who the hell really knows? Well, but two of those don't want to be separated. They don't have to be. Yeah, but they're going to impact. No, think about it. We are the women's champion. Think of how many times that's been done before. No. Get the titles. Yeah. It it won't be the first time. They're going to go where there's a tag division. I agree. Cassie Lee could Got carry it. it out for them, but they're but they're they're going to be a tag team in Impact. It makes too much sense at this point. It makes too much sense. And there's also a little hardcore country there. Hardcore country. Because I think Mickey James is also a viable option. Burn out. Burn um, out. Burn all right. Out. AEW World Championship time. Kenny Omega with Don Callis defends the belt against Orange Cassidy and the Bastard Pack. Uh, Orange Cassidy stood tall at the end of the show on Friday, but I think all of us might be in agreement here. The belt collector marches on. Kenny Omega Correct. moves forward. One winged Correct. angel, one, two, three. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure we're all in agreement. Um, 
I'm going to take it one step further. I think that I, I think that OC eats the pin. I also think he gets the loudest pop of the night. Uh, yeah, I, I think can, here's what I think is going to happen. I think Cassidy is going to finish um, Pac, Pac and Kenny's going to throw him out of the ring and get the pin. I dig it. Yeah. <laughs> that one's pretty short and sweet. Yeah. Kenny's gonna win. We know that. And yeah. I don't I don't really know why. I don't really know why either of these two guys are are, are here. Um, yeah, one and two guys. No, no, no. I yeah. get that. And I get that. I get that. I get that. But hold on, but you, you can manipulate those however you want. Um, I'll say this Orange Cassie's there because he's the most over guy on the show um people still love him and you're just coming back to fans where he gets the biggest reaction you Mm -hmm. get the bastard pack in there because he's going to compliment both guys in the ring and it allows orange cash to look strong in a title match that he's inevitably going to lose this is this is the perfect setup for for people to gain in loss i don't think pot gains anything by being in this match I don't think Pac gets pinned so he can push to have a singles match later. It could be. Um, never forget, Pac still holds the uh, submission victory over uh, Kenny at All Out. And Kenny acknowledged it. So, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe this is a, uh, an inevitability of them running this back 1v1. Yeah, her Iron Man match was also fantastic, but I think it's main event time, guys. It's Pinnacle Inner Circle Stadium Stampede. If the Inner Circle lose, they must disband as a team forever. Um, so I think this is a cinematic match. First, first, first off, um, if last night was any indication, um, it seems almost too obvious because it's well first it's not gonna be in front of fans second of all they have to figure out some way to protect jericho because i don't think he's 100 percent. i wouldn't be surprised if they pull fans into stadium seats so they're gonna take time out of the pay-per-view to move fans from daily's place to the field is what you're saying I think it's possible, yeah. It's a lot uh, of time. It I, is. I, I, here, here's my my idea on this. A, you can run the entire vignette of this match, which could take up to about five to six minutes. Yeah. Additionally, you can have the announcement for all out that's gonna be in Chicago, so you can have the video package there. You can also, you have, can also have Kenny and Don get on the mic after winning the triple threat, and the elite coming out and holding the belts, and and I mean there's ways to take up time. I I don't think with a full daily's place you can have enough time without killing your pay per view. I agree. Now, killing. The... All right, I, I agree that it's going to be cinematic. Uh, and that's why it's going to close the show. Mm. And I'm picking the pinnacle. I think that's going against the grain. Um, just, I hope they don't 50 50 book it. I don't see how you could do anything but have another match with these guys, a continued rivalry with these guys. I, I think this is the way you have to end it. Now, if memory serves me correctly, um, you know, we were talking about the last time we, we were on, we were, we, that we were on the WrestleCast, and we were talking about potential matches down the line. We were already talking about this feud continuing on for months and months to come. And now... We're talking about it just ending. I don't think that happens. 
I, just, I, think, I think that I think I think there's too much invested at this point to just to to just cut it right now. Uh, what what do you top this with? You've gone all in that the stadium stampede is the only way to top blood and guts. What matches out there that you could have all these guys wrestle in? I don't. I don't think you need to have as as, you, as your, your quote unquote rubber match. I don't. I don't think you need to have a you know grand a you know grandiose match to try and top everything. Um, I think. I think a wrestling match would be would be the ultimate tell be all. We already. You know, the, the problem is, is we've already done that. We have not. We have not done a five on five traditional Survivor Series tag team match. Additionally, oh, I don't think this ends with Pinnacle versus Inner Circle. I think this ends with MJF versus Chris Jericho. We already did that at a pay per view where both were kind of pushing, kind of jokingly cheating and such. Mm-hmm. Not a. I'm going to break your arm. Yeah. I don't know. I don't I don't think. I'm over is. it. I'm over it. I want to see the pinnacle get into it with the elite. Uh, but that's not the direction. I don't think they go that way yet. I don't think they do either. Uh, but uh, that's, that's what I want to see. I want to see the pinnacle chase the belt collector. I want to see the pinnacle chase the gold. Because when you're the pinnacle... You're at the top. When you're at the right. top, and when you're at the top, you carry the straps. You have. I think, to, I think to delay that, they gotta lose on Sunday, because I don't think we can push them right now immediately to the top of the card. I mean, I mean they're gonna main event this show, and they're gonna be a part of the match that I think everyone's gonna come away talking about. Um. Mm-hmm. I think this is inner circle going over unless because there was one thing that stuck out last night that kind of, I, I don't know, uh, it caught my attention with Sammy Guevara during his discussion, uh, during his like, you know, I learned that life without the inner circle is horrible. I could see maybe Guevara turning on Jericho also not That's, to join the pinnacle by any means, but so, to kind of push the, we need, we need to all move on. So let me ask you this. Yeah. Is the inner circle disbanded? If Guevara flips on Jericho, they kick Jericho out. And the other four stay together in a stable under they, a new, under a new name. Nah, I don't think so. They can never. Could they do again. that? They can. They cannot team again. That's kind of how it was meant. Well, without without Jericho, they're not teaming again. Together. No, but you still have Sammy and Hager teaming together. You still have yeah uh, PMP with them. That's so, still the same team. But by, but by that argument, with that argument, PMP can't be a tag team anymore. No, I think they're considered their own separate entity, just like how FDR is considered, you know, the tag team, you know? My point being, I don't think you can you can go back on that. Jericho's out, so we're no longer the same thing. I don't think it works that way. Right. Uh, that's why I'm asking what you um, Now, I, I could see Sammy Guevara going this route of turning on Jericho as well and now pushing it to be, you know... Jericho's out, so now let's do Hager versus Sammy Guevara. Or maybe Hager gets put out because I know he has a Bellator match uh, coming up soon. Could, in theory, could Sammy and P&P stay together? I'm hesitant to say yes to that also. I don't think these guys can team together. You mean the Spanish, the Spanish gods? I don't think so. I, I don't think you could keep that either. Uh, I, I could see Sam and Guevara shattering the inner circle so they can never team again. Um, but I, I just I think the inner circle win. Plus, wrestling math, Pinnacle stood tall at the end of the show. 
Oh, yeah, you're right. Ah, eh, screw it. I want to see more of this. Um, I think the end game is a five on five elimination style match. Um, you know, the stakes don't have to be like a uh, loser leaves town or anything of that nature, but um, I think just kind of the ultimate survivor aspect of it, I think could be an interesting rubber match. Like, oh, you know, we've been, you know, to hell and back. We've been to blood and guts. Oh, you know, we've been through the ringer with Stadium Stampede. You know, survivors. Can I also throw out maybe instead of it being a tag match to close out this thing, we do a best of series. You could do a best of five where all right, we're going to have five singles matches. Sean Spears versus Sammy Guevara, Hager versus Wardlow, FTR versus PMP, Mm -hmm. MJF versus Jericho, and then the five on five singles match where it's single pin instead of elimination. That's a all lot. in the same night. <laughs> see that? See that's a lot. Um, you know what I'm what I'm also lo- looking for is um, for the inner circle to get their revenge. Um, they are going to all hit the pile driver. You know, they're all going to get the pin. Something, some, some of that nature. You know, and eventually we will get the you know, Survivor Series-esque, um, you know, match. I think one five-on-five match is plenty. I don't think we need five matches. It seems a little overkill. But, you know, if you're trying to top what's already been done, I don't think that's possible. It's going to be hard. Yeah. So, all right, guys, we've gone through this entire card. We've put a lot there. This is my last question for you. All right. What match are you most excited for? Oh, and what match are you least excited for? Why not both? Yeah. Um. So I'll so I'll so I'll start. <coughs> um. What I am looking forward to the most is the three-way match for the AEW World Title, and here's why: there is so much storytelling, and 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 work that you can put into a three-way match, whether it be your traditional triple threat or whether it be a three-way dance. Um, You guys know my stance on that. I prefer the three-way dance above all. Um, But either way, there's a lot of storytelling to be had here. Um, All three guys can work their ass off. Um, This is going to be an outstanding championship match. Um, It's their first three-way singles match for the AEW world title. So I think we're kind of breaking ground here with this. Um, The match I am least excited to see is Sting Darby Allen versus Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page. I believe there's a lot of intrigue there. Um, And I know the story has been there. I don't want to see Sting wrestle. I don't. And I know that might be an unpopular opinion amongst you know, professional wrestling fans. And, you know, granted, I was a Sting fan as a kid. You know, I wore my Sting shirt to school and I thought I was the bee's knees. A little stinger. Yeah. Um, You know, I didn't paint my face or anything like that. But, you know, I I like Sting in the 90s. You know, Sting in 2021 should be in a backstage role away from TV. Okay, I think we can all agree that his time in AEW has been underwhelming at best. Oh, okay. yeah, I'm cool with him being a manager, just My, yeah. I well, then oh, I so feel he, like, yeah, you don't need to be in the ring if you're gonna and see if you're gonna come out five weeks in a row, say the same 30 second blurb, and then snow is falling, and you're gonna get a one up on you know, a pretty powerful fag faction, you know, two out of three times, like, yeah, I'm going to start to lose interest because it's, because you shouldn't be in that spot. Um, Patty, which looking forward to the most, which not looking forward to. I am most excited for Miro 
and Lance Archer because these are dudes that are monsters, but these are dudes that can freaking go. Um, I don't think either one of these guys necessarily gets the um, credit for in, in, in re- work that they're capable of. And I think they're going to tear the house down. I think it's going to be the match of the night. Um, I think it's going to be a really damn good match. Um, and, you know, I didn't throw it out there earlier, but Kip Sabian, potential wild card in that match. He just, he just had surgery last week. Oh, uh, was that why they did the uh, – I didn't know that. I was going to say, they haven't shown anything since the beatdown, so I was <sighs> – yeah, yeah, I actually thought about that as a potential swing in that match also. Well, and, and the, the, the cool over. thing is it could have gone either way. He could mm-hmm. he could no, be he could, still. he could be like a, a beaten, you know, beaten down child and go help out Miro, you know, for fear of Miro, or he could turn on Miro after the beating he took. So uh, but I guess never mind on that. Um Least excited, I'm probably with Ryan on that. Uh, for our, just for sake of argument, I will pick the uh, women's title match, which is probably surprising because they're probably going to put on a great match. Um, but it just feels like such a foregone conclusion that it kind of takes away some of the excitement for it. Um, I might be wrong because they're totally capable of stealing the whole show. They're both great workers. I'm not trying to take anything away from them. I just don't feel like I have some, the same energy for them as I do a lot of the card. You know, no, I, I totally lied. The worst match tonight is going to be Cody and a go-go. Yeah, that was, that was my choice there. Um, just because I think – the wrong thing is going to happen there. And that's my concern. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and this build could have been better. I, don't get me wrong. I'm going to say this right now. I know a lot of people didn't like Cody's initial promo. I have nothing. I, I have no heat for uh, a patriotic promo. Um, and I don't think the timing's wrong for it. I think Cody did well enough for it. But uh, since that promo, I feel like, AEW has seen the response and kind of slowed the roll real quick on this match. And I think that's what's hurt this match the most. Um, and the match I'm most excited for, I think, has to be Stadium Stampede. Uh, I think you guys have both mentioned matches that are going to be fantastic, and I think they're going to be incredible. Um, but I'm just – I'm very curious to see how they are going to do it this go around. Cause I don't think there's going to be a lot of the laughs that we saw in the elite versus inner circle. I think this is going to be brutal. I think they're going to try and make this look vicious and bloody and all kinds of horrifying. And I, I think that's what it should be. I'm very excited to see what they do. Uh, I am excited for stadium stampede. I know that our group is split on, the first stadium stampede. Some people did not care for it, but I thought it was great. Um, yeah, it was, enjoy- it was. It was. It was enjoyable to watch. It was a lot of fun. It, it was, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna get some heat for this, and I'm ready for it. It was maybe the first incredibly entertaining match I enjoyed at the beginning of COVID. Um. That card in general, in my opinion, was fantastic. And I remember being very happy with it anyway. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited for this one. Uh, and with that being said, we've given all of our opinions. Cod, hit him with the plug. Guys, you're watching this on YouTube. Check out our other wonderful YouTube ad- adventures we've had. Alvarez versus Meltzer. Quick count. Referee's discretion. Creative control. All of our wonderful shows, opportunities, and adventures we have together. Um, make sure you check us out on Facebook Live, Mondays and Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the WrestleCast. Um, if you missed our last episode, we had the Next Gen guys back on. Cody and Eddie, where they live announced 
that's a, another match on their loaded card for the Party Bowl, which if you are watching this, it's the end of May 2021. You can still get your tickets. Go to nextgentn.net, go to events or tickets, and you can still purchase tickets. It's $18 for adults, $15 for children. There will more than likely no tickets being sold at the door. So please get your tickets in advance. And if you like what you hear, you like what you see, you want to hear more of it, you want to help us create more content for you, go to kofi.com slash pwo123. It's as easy as 123. And just for the price of a cup of coffee a day, you can help us do that. And that link is down in the description below. I love it. Hey, and if you're going out, and supporting that next gen show, whether you're here in Virginia or whether you're already there in Tennessee, shoot us a message on our Facebook or our YouTube. Let us know you're going, man. We want to meet fans. You know, let's go out and have a beer after the show. Let's let's pregame before the show, baby. Yeah, man. PWO is coming to Knoxville for the whole weekend, the extended weekend. We want to meet time, man. We want to meet fans. We want to talk wrestling with people, man. It's all about love. It's all about the community. Let's go out and have a good time. Hey, and if you're a next gen original, if you're if you're someone who's there all the time, you're a hardcore fan. Shoot us a message on who we need to keep an eye out for. Cody hinted at some uh, surprises that could be happening at this show. Give us some hints, man. Maybe we're gonna have to run a prediction show for the party bowl. Listen, I'm all, I'm all I'm all for it. That seems like a road show. Like in the car. Like we like we have a seven hour drive to Knox, seven and a half hour drive to Knoxville. Um, be on the lookout for road to Knoxville. That's coming. We road are going. Knoxville. We are going to totally rip off AEW and produce our. Our travel show. PWO Road 2. We're going to have a PWO Road 2. And we'll probably have a road going home show as well. Uh, also, just maybe be, a PWO Road to Maryland. Just because you got to find yeah. ways to eat up 16 hours worth of car ride. So I'm You're sure welcome. we'll I'm sure we'll have some fun and, and some, some good content will come from that, guys. I'm pumped for it. I'm pumped for it, guys. I'm ready. And you know what? We're going to finish recording this. It's officially Sunday. Guys, happy double or nothing. And happy Memorial Day. Have a safe weekend. Enjoy some time. If you're into it, get a hamburger. Have one for the PWO boys. We'll have one for y'all. We'll see you guys for our review Monday on the WrestleCast. With that, we have to, have to, have to bid you adieu. It's late, y'all. We're tired. I think Ryan has to go work in the morning. We got to get the hell out. So goodbye. Good night. Bang.